Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. Just a couple points of logistics before we get started. Uh, today's short presentation is being recorded, so you look for an email shortly following the webinar with a link to the recording of this session on demand. Please do share this with others in your organization. In fact, I might even encourage that you use this as let's call it a lunch and learn, where perhaps you invite some uh, people within your organization to join you for lunch, watch the webinar, and perhaps discuss what implications this might have for your organization. Just a great way to extend that learning. Due to the short nature of this webinar, we will not be fielding questions. However, if you do have questions, our presenter would be more than happy to answer those offline. So you feel free to email the presenter with your questions. Today's webinar is really a lead up to the TWI and CADA Summit Europe, which takes place uh, 11th and 12th of June in Malmo, Sweden, which if you're not familiar with Malmo, it is just about 20 minutes train ride from Copenhagen. Uh, we ask that you please do consider joining us for this conference. It's a wonderful opportunity to meet top thought leaders in TWI, CADA, and then the integration of both TWI and CADA. That's really the uniqueness of this event is that you'll have those with experience in how those two can work together and complement one another. You can learn more about this conference by visiting TWI and CADA Summit EU. Well, for now, let me introduce our presenter for today, uh, Carla Lattenauers. Carla is co-founder and certified TWI trainer of the TWI Institute Netherlands and Germany, and has been working with continuous improvement for many years. Uh, since 2001, she works as a lean consultant and a trainer coach and has extensive experience implementing uh, continuous improvement projects in the Netherlands and Germany. So Carla, let me first of all thank you for being with us today. I appreciate your time. Thanks for the invitation. Um, before before your presentation starts, I you know I mentioned yeah. the uh, TWI and CADA Summit. You, you've been an important uh, contributor to this conference for uh, the last several years. In fact, one of my favorite photos is from last year when we were in Venice uh, that shows you uh, facilitating a two hour practice session. Um, uh -huh. It's just a, a great photo of, uh, of engagement. So I'm just curious if you could just briefly share uh, kind of what's been your experience with the summit before you uh, start your presentation. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see you again too. Um, what I always like, and like last year, we did the job relations uh, session uh, and it's always interesting to see that people who come there, that they are kind of of a different level of knowledge. Some know about TWI a lot, some know about Kata a lot. And what I'm always interested in is that people are really eager to share their knowledge. And I also see really newcomers in and they their questions also triggers me. So I always see people get a lot getting out of it and me as a personally too because i see where they get questions so for me this is always an inspiration to hear their stories and questions of others and to see the community growing that kata yeah. and tito and i go so well together yeah, yeah. well th thank you so much for being an important contributor to that event and uh, uh, certainly look forward to seeing you in malmo so carla thanks for that and for now i'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to you and uh, let you let you do your presentation Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, welcome all of you. It's always strange to do a webinar because you normally see faces around you. And I'm trying to see who you are, what you know, and of course I don't. So I'm looking forward here to share my thoughts and knowledge on job safety and uh, looking forward to reactions on it. So please do write me emails if you have a question or just a remark. In the past, I also did work as an employee in a chemical and an aluminium plant. And when I was young, it was one of the first jobs I got. I really realized that I, it was safety was so important in the work 
that they you just get educated within it and it becomes a part of you and if i look now at job safety i see this this using job safety is creating this safe work culture that does motivate me a lot because it's all about people and in the end if we all think of it in the right way we all understand the importance of safety but if we look through too, the question is do we really act always accordingly if we would have a safe working culture then we would also act like that so that's where the presentation is all about uh, I'm going to explain about TWI and job safety and in TWI in, in general. And I give you an overview also in the end of also how to implement and what our experience are. In general, you all will know, well, I'm having a problem with the PowerPoint. Now I cannot go to the next slide. Dwayne. Yeah, so have... it... It's, I'm uh, doing second mouse too, but it doesn't work. So I don't know if on your keyboard you might. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And for okay. some reason, it'll be fine from this point on, Carla. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Dwayne warned me before. So uh, this is the accident. Many people. It's a triangle accident uh, of Heinrich. It's a long known triangle, and it shows the relationship between accidents, minor accidents, and near misses. So if we look at the triangle, on top we see the major injuries and minor injuries, but guns below down there we see unsafe acts and conditions. This triangle is visualizing these relationship between accidents and near misses and unsafe acts and conditions. And it's the cornerstone of the 20th century health and safety philosophy. Many of you probably know it stands also for that it shows that for each 10 unsafe acts here, we will have uh, one near miss that will happen. So for each 10 of unsafe acts, we will have one near miss. And if you look at the same way for each 10 near misses, you will see one accident will happen. And out of those 30 accidents even, you can have, and have a major accident that will happen. So what does this, story tells us, it tells us that we should always try to reduce the number of near misses and even the number of unsafe acts and conditions, because that's the only way how we can make accidents, preventing accidents to happen. And of course, the question is, how do we get this focus on the lower level on a daily work, how to integrate this in daily work, because we have many things to do. Other question would be also, who can prevent those accidents from happening? If we look at the TWI program, we always have one major focus group, and we call these focus group the supervisors. The supervisors are in charge of the daily work, and they have to take action when problems occur. If we look at the definition for supervisors within TWI, we say that's everybody who's in charge of people or anybody else who directs the works to others. So also, if you're just a new person, you teach somebody else the new work, in this moment, you are a supervisor. And also in this moment, you are also in charge and has the responsibility for the safety of others. Therefore, those supervisors, we need to help them to develop their knowledge and skills. Those supervisors, they can prevent accidents from happening. So that's the question we have to answer ourselves. What knowledge and skills do these supervisors need? So some of you will already know the model of the five needs of good supervisors. It's the basic model, model of TWI. And it consists of knowledge on the left side and skills. Knowledge is something we know in our head, we can learn quickly, but skills is something like a habit. We have to learn by practicing it a lot. Now let's have a look on the skills or and the, have the knowledge of the supervisors with respect to safety. If we look at the knowledge of the work, supervisors should explicitly know the different kinds of risks in the work, what the processes are all about, and also about the safety risks of the material and tools used. So 
Knowledge of the safe way of working is part of the knowledge of a supervisor that he or she should know. Also, supervisors should know the safety rules and regulations. And this is part of the second item here of knowledge. It's part of the knowledge of the responsibilities. The knowledge of rules and regulations supervisors need to know. But like with the knowledge of the work, they can only learn that in each different company because it deviates in every company. So in every situation, supervisors should learn this in company. You cannot learn this in general. This is different with the skills. Besides the knowledge, we have the three basic skills you can learn by doing using TWI. The first skill is the skill in leading of people. Then we have the skill of instructing people. And the third skill is the skill in improving methods. These skills you can learn in general, and they can be learned by practice also in, in to generate that skill. So you will be able to learn it, but you have to practice it. For doing this, TWI program do exist. For the leading part, we can learn this by doing job relations. For instructing, we can learn this by doing job instruction. And for improving methods, we can lose it by losing job methods. So it's something you can learn in general and then use it for different situations. So uh, if we have a look at the skill of the basic skills of TWI, we see different types of needs. Sometimes people don't know things and they can do, then we need the skill of job instruction. Sometimes job relations is needed when people don't want to do or don't care. In this case, there is the need for job relations. And if people don't see how to improve their work or the work is just not done practically and safely, we need job methods to improve the working method. So as we see in here, the middle part of all is also connected to job safety. Like in the five needs, safety also is the center part of all, because it says that in every of those five needs, safety is integrated. So it doesn't need to have a special focus. You have to do it on a daily basis. And this is also why job safety is in the center of the skills of TWI. Just let's have a look at the more detail on each of those basic skills. For example, for job relations, this is a skill, how do the way to lead to deal with people. So job relations is helping supervisors developing the skill of dealing with people. It leans, it learns supervisors a way of thinking and how to present prevent problems from happening and to take proper actions or to prevent problems for arising. Especially in job relations, we see more kinds of patterns. It's a thinking pattern. By using the yellow card, the four step method of how to handle a problem, we can learn using this thinking pattern by doing it. And especially in job safety or in safety issues, if people do not want to act safely, we can use this yellow card to solve these problems. So especially if you see people saying like uh, supervisors telling, I told him to not to hurry, but he's not listening and he's doing dangerous things. Yeah? Sometimes people do not wear earplugs and supervisors see it. So sometimes supervisors do see the risk, but they don't know how to act on it. In this way, using and learning job relations can help supervisors how to handle these problems. So in this way, job relations can help safety. And especially in job relations, we also see different kinds of processes or phases where problems come up. In the early phase, we could see a problem coming before it happens. So we can see it happening, uh, coming before it happens. If a good supervisor sees this, he can take actions and it's much easier to take action before the problem gets escalated and gets bigger. But in case the person doesn't see it coming, you could get tipped off as a supervisor. You get noticed that the person is not always wearing his earplugs. So by being tipped off, you can be more proactive as a supervisor and take action up front. 
In some cases, supervisors don't see that and you get further on the escalation on the problem. So the problem will come to you. And for example, with the earplugs, it could be that the persons are complaining of the colleague who's never wearing an earplug. So in this case, you see the color of orange in the face. You have to have take action. Yeah? In the better way, you would have taken action before, but now it gets urgent. Yeah? And it you even gets more urgent if you're on the shop floor, you're speaking to the guy who's not wearing his earplug and the guy is shouting at you. So now you run into the problem and you have to do something. So we see that in the three or the four phases of job relations, within the job relations, we learn to see problems coming sooner and take action. This is of course the same with job safety. If we are acting more proactive, safety problems can be solved earlier, especially on human problems. So this is one kind of a problem and a solution, job relation is helping to help supervisors to deal problems due to people problems, especially to safety. The other way a problem could happen if that the supervisor sees that the person cannot do the job well or he doesn't do the job well. In this case, the basic skill of job relation can help. And if you look at job, uh, job instruction, even the, the definition of job instruction is including safety. It says job instruction is the way to get a person to quickly remember to do a job correctly, safely and conscientiously. So it's the way to teach people to do the job well. So how is that exactly done within job instruction? Some of you already know, but also job instruction has a four step method. It's the four steps of how to instruct. If we look at these steps, there's, it's a one-on-one -on -one instruction method. And the first step will prepare the worker to, do the, to tell the job. Make sure the person is at ease and making him interested to learn the job. Then in step two, the instructor will tell and show how the job, break, uh, how the job has to be done. The person, the instructor will tell the important steps, the key points and the reasons for the key points. In step two, the instructor is following a job breakdown sheet. And by this, he's not forgetting to tell all the important items. I'm going to tell you a little bit further, a bit more on this. In step three then of instructing, the learner has to do the job. He has to try out the performance and the instructor here is checking if the learner did understand well according the job instruction breakdown sheet. So here the instructor needs to check and he also needs to check if the person is not only doing the job well, but he also needs to check if the person is understanding the job well. And after that, it works fine yeah, until the person knows that the learner knows the job, the instructor will follow up and will put the person on their own. So after the instruction, then the, inst the learner has to learn the job in a safe way. And how do we make sure that we do get all the risky items in the instruction? It is guaranteed by using the job instruction breakdown sheet. And in the next slide, you're going to see an example of a job instruction breakdown sheet. It does show what the important steps are. It also tells us the how of those important steps. So what are the key points for each important steps and why those key points are like this. So why to do it like this. So this is important because if we prepare an instruction for operators, supervisors learn always to look and make a good job breakdown. And uh, by doing this preparation, he can also upfront think of what are the safety risks. So if we look at the key points here in the middle, these key points are the hows to do the job. And there are three kinds of key points. If we look at the more detail of the job breakdown sheet, we see here there are three kinds of key points. 
The first is the key point that anything that might make, make break that might make or break the job. So everything that can happen that will make the quality the job wrong, that could be the reason for a key point. So that is a key point. Here you see the second reason for a key point that would be anything that might injure the worker. And here we see that safety is included as a criteria for a key point. It even says that safety factors are always key points. And we see a third item for a key point, And these are the things that anything that makes the work easier to do. So those tricks in a work. But also ergonomic items can be things that are key points in how to do the job well. It also makes the work easier to do. So specifically for the second key point, we see that safety factors are always key points, but also sometimes ergonomical items do pop up when we are making or looking for key points in the job. So uh, by learning supervisors how to make a job breakdown, they learn to prepare and see safety risks. And they see and create a habit to look for this and to instruct them to others. So in this case, we do help people to do a safer job so that they know how to do the job safe in a safe way. So also job instruction we see helps supervisors to do the job safer and creating a safer working environment. Then we have the third skill and it's the skill of job methods. We can learn by job methods is about improving. Sometimes people do not see how to improve. Uh, if we look at the third program, job methods, supervisors will learn how to see for improvements and just not by seeing them, but by asking themselves and others the right question. So within job methods, we learn how to ask the right questions. And in this way, we create ideas by making the best use of the current machines, material and people. So if we have a more detailed look on job methods, we also see the four step method on two sides of the card. And in the first step, it says we have to break down the job. So we list all the details of the job. In step two, we see that we have to question every detail. And in this part of the job methods, also safety is referred to. So by questioning every detail, like why, what, where, when and who, or the best or how to do it the best way, we can also consider how we can do this for safety. So by questioning every detail, we can find risky situations within the job methods. And by having questionized these items, ideas do pop up, which you can work out in step three. And in step three of job methods, people can develop a new working method. So they put the fit thing, the items together in the right order, in the easier way, and find a better way to do the job, also a safer way. But before they can do and implement the, implementation, the improved new method, first step four has to be done. And step four, it learns supervisors to apply the new method, by selling the proposal to others, but also by getting approval for it. So, and here also we see on the card in step four, safety is referred to. Supervisors learn to only apply new implementations when ideas, when they are safe. So they have to get approval concerned on safety too. So again, here within jobs methods, the base, one of the basic skills of supervisors will help to create more safer work environments. So if we look at this in the end, this is more than what we got before. Why would we need more? Hmm? Job methods, job uh, instruction and job relation is doing a good thing. And uh, maybe it's more than enough to do. What is the reason why would we need more? If we look at job safety, it does help us on another level. Sometimes we see people not seeing the unsafe acts and conditions. Yeah. I often notice this when I work on the shop floor with supervisors. 
I see people tending to think that production goes first and then to, to, ne to neglect the risks. Yeah? Or sometimes I am busy working on job breakdowns and supervisors do not see those safety factors as key points. They just overlook them or they are not aware. Or we see people not wearing earplugs and supervisors are even not noticing it. Yeah? And sometimes I even tell them, and I'll tell them I have to wear those earplugs, but they say, hmm, it's not so bad. We only have minor accidents and we only need to be here a short time. So in those circumstances for me, this is a clear situation that job instruction, job relation and job methods will not help to get a safer environment because the supervisors themselves do not see it. So that's why that would be helpful to use job safety. How is job safety working then? What is job safety? Job safety is a program that makes supervisors aware that the meaning of safety is to consider measures and to take action before a safety accident occurs. So it's not about handling the aftermath, it is before looking upfront, like within job relations and like within Heinrich's accident triangle. Yeah? We also here learn that supervisors uh, have to look to incidents happening and they are often caused by common causes. Often more unsafe acts and conditions do take place in the same time and those are leading to minor or major injuries. So that's also the basic for job safety. The principle is that supervisors have to learn how to see the chain of causes. This is visualized by this chain. Yeah? And by taking away the different kind of causes which can lead to incidents, accidents and incidents can be avoided. So this is what people need to learn. People need to see that injuries do happen due to incidents and that incidents are caused that incidents are caused by direct causes like unsafe acts and conditions and if we look at direct causes and have to rethink of this that there are indirect causes that can make these direct causes to happen so unsafe acts and conditions is not the final end of the chain there are indirect causes that makes those direct causes to happen and this is important to understand. So indirect causes do not directly cause incidents, but they make those direct causes to happen. And we could also take away those indirect causes so that direct causes could be prevented. So this is what we call, we have to learn that we can break the chain by eliminating the causes. How do we do this within job safety? If we look at the job safety, the four step method, we see that there are four steps like in job relations and job instruction and job methods. But this job safety card has some similarities with job relations. In the first step, it asks us to spot the causes of danger, like we saw in the chain of causes. Here, we learn supervisors to go to Gemba and to go and see and check the situation the records and to talk to people. While we are doing this, we always have to search for the causes of dangers and we always have to question and to consider two things. We have to consider things and we have to consider people. So this is an important part of the job safety methods. In step two then, we are like in JR, have to think of some countermeasures. Yeah. There is a very interesting question on the caution point of step two, which is asking the supervisor, are yourself the cause? So this question is based on risky supervisor styles. You can have people or supervisor who have a negatively influence on safety. We already spoke about those production first type of supervisors who will always tend to need to disrespect safety rules and say production goes first. But there are other styles of supervisors too, like 
those supervisors who think that the people should learn the hard way style. So those different kinds of styles are part of the training within job safety. And this question is referring to those styles. It is reflecting supervisors and asking ourselves the question, maybe we ourselves are the cause. And while we are deciding on countermeasures, we can think of doing better behavior or thinking of a better countermeasures. So like with job relation, the card of job safety is helping us to think according a thinking pattern and to fight, find the right countermeasures. So how is this working then? How do then supervisors start to learn and see these risks they have to look for? Like in every TWI training, job safety is learned by repetition and practice. In five sessions of two hours, 10 supervisors will reflect on incidents happened in the past. In this slide, you see a safety analysis table, which we use during this training and by analyzing incidents happened in the past. In this, we learn to define the incident the injury and the direct causes. And we also learn to practice to see the indirect causes and the unsafe action conditions. So by using many examples and practicing to reflect on countermeasures, supervisors learn to see the chain of causes. So this is the first part of the training, but this is not the end because it's all about doing action before incidents happens. So the first part of the training is to learn how to see the chain of causes. And then the second part of the, pair of the training after the first sessions, supervisors will go to the shop floor and get an assignment and make and fill a work inspection form, a workplace inspection form. Therefore, there is a other side of the card of job safety. They ask the, this card of the part of the card shows in more detail where to look for. Supervisors go on the shop floor and use this backside of the card and fill in the workplace inspection form. In this way, supervisor starts to see the risk from their own shop floor and they have to think for countermeasures to enforce later on. In this way, you see in the training people will have countermeasures shared and a follow-up will happen later. So those improvements will happen and will get done too. So also here we see that we are not looking only for incidents to learn from. That's only the reason we do is to learn about the safety uh, for the chain of causes. But what we do is what we want to learn is to see the things happening up front and then we find the best countermeasures. Within the step on job safety, within countermeasures, also other TWI skills can help. Yeah? If people, if we found that people don't know how to do the job safe, then supervisors know already which countermeasures to take. They can instruct their people. And if the supervisor starts to see that people are not following the rules, he can use job relations to find possible actions based on job relations. And in case of the work method is not smart, sometimes people see that it's not logic how the work has to be done, a safer new method can be developed by applying job methods. So after learning to see the risks, Supervisors can integrate the other TWI skills within job safety or the other way around. Job safety in this way is a, really in the center of all these three skills. Many people of us ask us how would you implement job safety within your organization? Like with job relations, we see that job safety is a program that can only work when management is applying it to. As management is responsible for creating a safe environment, and because they are the role model for the rest of the organization, we always suggest that they run the program top down. So this means that the management will join and the effort of, spot of spotting the causes of danger. 
and that they also will support people in doing the same. So from our experience also, we also got uh, good feedback by using 5S principles. So here you see we integrate sometimes 5S training connected to job safety. And I would like, many of you probably know what 5S is, but I'd like to explain why. So if you look what 5S is, it is a basic principle for improvements. Many companies do apply it as a basic foundation and it's a program or a foundation to make a creating an ideal workplace. And what is the definition of an ideal workplace? It's of course a workplace that doesn't cause us defects where no deviations and no accidents will happen. So exactly in the purpose of 5S, we see safety included too. And the, follow, the philosophy of 5S, how to get this ideal workplace is following. The first step, it's based on the five S's from Japanese, but uh, here are the English one. The first thing you have to do is you look on the shop floor and you sort out. The real thing is we only want to have the material we need. So we make sure we only have the things in place we need. And then we get to the second S, we have to set limits and location. So it means we're going to look which material has to be on what place and in which amount. So that we can take it and put it back and it's very practical and safe. If we have that, we always make sure that the material and the surroundings are clean. So shine and sweep. By doing this, we are creating ownership, but we also see deviations early. And so we can take actions for deviations. The fourth S is about standards, setting standards. And the fifth about sustaining. Many companies do have a 5S auditing system. So they set the standard and audit accordingly. And in this way, they can see if the, the standard is still in place based for the workplace. And in this way, also safety could be integrated in this auditing system. And based on these audits, again, new countermeasures, improvement ideas can come up to make the place safer or easier to do work for. So for us, using job safety is creating new impulses for the mostly already happening 5S system in the company. And it makes it more uh, on, on the level of safety too. So many companies do use 5S for hygienic reasons and they see that safety is really part of it. So this is why we often use 5S and using it within the implementation of job safety. We already saw here that this is a very proactive way to look at safety. We are not waiting until accidents happen. And this is exactly what we learn in JR. If we look at this in this way, we will be able to see problems happening, uh, sizing up before it happens. We're going to see them before them happen. Or we, because we are auditing, we are being tipped off soon enough to take actions. So the reason why we do this auditing is to see ha things happening and we can take action sooner. So it's a basic principle which is... Uh, connected to job relations and by using a safety analysis table and filling work instructions forms for job safety will do exactly the same. Supervisors will be seeing risks in an earlier stage and ideally they then take actions before an accident happens. If we look also on the bigger chart, uh, companies want to implement and they need measures to know how good they are or if they improve. On safety, what kind of measures we can have? Many companies already have an accident record. In most companies, this is even a legal duty to do, but it's not very proactive. So it, it's telling the aftermath. So this is a needed KPI, but it's not helping us to get in a safer environment. So the other measurement would be near misses. If we would near miss, if we would report near misses and put a KPI on it, it would be stimulating to look more for near misses. 
many companies do feel that this is a bit strange. It gives them an awkward feeling because they don't know what to communicate, that they are happy with near misses, because in the end, a near miss is also something not good. But on the other side, they want to stimulate people to look at near misses in the same way. Uh, in the past, I was at a company, and I liked that they had a very nice solution for this. They collected all the near misses in a year, and they put it up in a big pile. And once a year, a raffle took place. In this case, the production leader took one of the near misses out of the big pile by chance. And then the reporter of that near miss did win a weekend to Paris. So it was always a big event once a year in, to look at who's going to win the weekend of Paris. And in this way, reporting near misses was stimulated to do so. Yeah? And it was not telling people we like to have near misses. But in the end, also near misses is not really a proactive measure. It does not say that we are in control. So again, we need to measure unsafe acts and conditions before a near miss happens. And we already discussed this within the 5S system, we would have an auditing score to make this visible. So this is the way where companies can be more proactive to measure. Some companies do have very high hygiene and environmental standards, and they have auditing systems in place for that too. So there is a suggestion to connect it too. And the other option is would of course be to have this safety audit in place, and by regularly doing this safety audit, connected to 5S or not, you can visualize the score, and by integrating the score in the daily controls, the KPI on safety is more visible and more proactive. So in this way, supervisors get a clear help on a daily measure to do their daily process confirmation. Within job instruction, they also learn how to observe people and to take actions. Yeah? In using job safety, they also are aware of observing more and talking to people, seeing the risks. So it's very well connected to the rest of the items, especially job instruction, where process confirmation is at the last item of the card. You have to look as a supervisor where how the work is to be done and if deviations are there. So this is very important to connect it with. And it's what we see that supervisors will do this as it is part of their daily work. So, in this presentation, I showed you that safety is part of the five needs of a good supervisor. It's part of the way to lead people and it can solve safety problems. It's part of a safe instruction way to make people learning it in the safe way. And it is part of how to improve to get ideas that makes the work method safer. But I also showed you now how job safety can help as a separate program to learn to see the chain of causes so that supervisors can see upfront action and take action. Yeah? Because we say a perfect safety record is not a record of faith, it's a record of our efforts as a supervisor. And I'm very happy to show you this because Personally, I always think that job safety is a simple way to learn to see others, to learn to see the risks. And it helps supervisors to reflect on their role and also on their behavior in a practical and a very respectful manner. And after every training, I also myself am more and more aware of safety again, because for all of us, it counts that we have to keep practicing. So if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, I will be at the summit in Malmo, the 11th and the 12th of June, so if you have questions there, I'm looking forward to meet you. And otherwise, please do not hesitate to email me. Thank you very much. Carla, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, not only for the presentation today, but really for your thought leadership um, in, in this area. Uh, what okay. a great presentation. What an important presentation. Uh, so really, thank you for that, and thank you for your your thought leadership at the uh, the upcoming summit. 
Um, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, you will receive an email shortly with a link to the recording. Uh, please do share this with others in your organization and, and talk about this as a team and, and discuss what this might mean for your organization and for your team's work. And then as uh, Carla invited you, please do reach out to her if you have additional questions. And then please do join us at the TWI and Cata Summit Europe, which takes place the 11th and 12th of June in Malmo, Sweden. Should be beautiful that time of year in Malmo, just across the water from Copenhagen. Uh, it's a great opportunity. If you, if you like this content, it's a great opportunity to dive deeper into things like job safety, job instruction, job relations, job methods as well as the improvement kata and the coaching kata, and then really the integration of all of these uh, together. There'll be a number of company case studies. There'll be thought leaders like Carla, Carla's uh, business partner, Gerard, uh, and a number of others from the TWI Institute across Europe. So please visit www.twiandkatasummit.eu to learn more. And again, Carla, let me thank you for uh, your presentation today. And let me thank everyone who participated in today's webinar. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.